we will start with a very interesting topic now. And uh, it's, it's even better because uh, the, the presenter will be uh, Marek Stesen, my colleague over here. But uh, he, ha uh, he had the presentation with his colleague, uh, Philip Zobek, who cannot be here today. So we actually uh, pre-recorded this, uh, this uh, presentation. So we will, uh, uh, we will put it online, this recording of the presentation. But Marek is here. So all the questions can be answered online. So do not hesitate to put them in and we can answer based on what you want to know. So I will ask to uh, run the recording of the presentation. Hello, uh, my name is Marek Šťastný and uh, I work at Unicorn as Product Hub Director. And we are here uh, together with Philip Zubek, our data scientist and AI specialist. Hello everybody to show you uh, how we use AI uh, to improve cybersecurity here in Unicorn. Unicorn delivers uh, its products using Plusforu Internet Service, which is digital world full of on-click products and services available for companies, organizations, and individuals. More than uh, 375,000 users can benefit from added value delivered by solutions and digital content. Unicorn provides its solution and digital content uh, using Plusforunet service 24 by 7. This is the standard way how Unicorn delivers information systems, digital world products, and uh, for example, products supporting uh, and enabling education 4.0. Digital content is uh, available on Plusforu stream. So you can see the uh, product portfolio is pretty wide. So uh, we operate beside each other, charge up as a EV charging solution, educate as the school information system for uh, education 4.0, and for example, strategy for green energy markets. All of this we provide uh, by uh, keeping and uh, following uh, highest security standards. And uh, uh, this way, uh, you can imagine uh, how complex such ecosystem could be and uh, how we uh, need to face and deal with some uh, challenges. From challenges point of view, uh, we need to uh, deal with solution covering uh, various domains operated in multi-cloud hybrid environments uh, with specific security performance and uh, availability uh, requirements, including hardware integration, for example, for uh, 4,000 charging stations uh, for U charge up, IoT, and uh, other services provided, for example, uh, by our partners. And all of this, for wide audience, including end users, developers, te testers, and for example, uh, automation. As you can see on the screen, the platform uh, processes daily 37 million requests, manages uh, over petabyte of persisted data, and uh, all of this, including almost 4,000 virtual machines. So from security point of view, uh, this is a really complex and uh, uh, variable environment. And uh, you can imagine that uh, uh, looking for some cybersecurity solution, which could help us to improve the uh, security generally, is uh, almost uh, mission impossible. We tried many of them, like, uh, uh, for example, commercial F5, dark trace, open source, mod security, and others. Uh, almost all of them failed in some part because uh, they uh, were not able to manage such a complex and variable uh, environment. So uh, we decided that uh, we need to change the approach, that uh, we need to do uh, something uh, a little bit different because uh, uh, what uh, we found out is that uh, we are uh, just uh, one of few companies uh, operating such a platform like uh, we have in Plusforunet. So 
this was the time when AI got involved because we found out that uh, AI could be perfect fit uh, to our needs. U-Cloud Threat Detection and the basic idea behind U-Cloud Threat Detection is that it analyzes incoming traffic and uh, classifies uh, particular requests by already known threats and tries to identify and help us notify uh, about uh, yet unknown threats. Threat Detection model and the uh, U-Cloud Threat Detection is uh, involved in a chain of components delivering a particular requests to the target endpoints. And uh, this way uh, creates additional security layer. It works the way that uh, Threat Detection is uh, looking on each of incoming requests. It also monitors the incoming IP or the source IP. It uh, also look for some uh, trends and uh, this way enables not just uh, identification of uh, possible uh, vulnerabilities and threats uh, coming to our platform, but uh, also uh, enables uh, identification of, for example, behavioral and uh, volumetric uh, threats. So, uh, the main benefit here uh, in threat detection of using machine learning is that uh, uh, instead of uh, describing and writing uh, huge amounts of uh, deterministic rules, uh, we are able uh, to take and apply uh, natural process by teaching AI to understand already existing threats and uh, on the other hand, to uh, let it look for hidden connections, to uh, try to find uh, new uh, yet unknown or previously unknown uh, threats. All of this, of course, requires uh, human supervision uh, because uh, in the end it is still the statistical work with numbers and probabilities. So. Uh, and this, all of this needs to be uh, correctly interpreted. So, uh, Philip Zoubek, our AI specialist, will uh, show you what we achieved and how. Thank you, Marek. Our task is basically binary classification. This means that the output of the machine learning model must be whether the request contains some malicious code or not. That's the questions we want uh, the model to answer. We used the uh, deep learning uh, to construct the model utilizing um, TensorFlow, which is a library uh, for machine learning and artificial intelligence by Google. And it uh, therefore consists of multiple layers where uh, the input is selected parameters from the incoming HTTP request. As, uh, the, as the requests are in the form of text, our uh, first layer is text vectorization. This, uh, this layer has the task of mapping the input text into numeric form uh, since the other layers can work, only, uh, can work only with some numeric forms of data. Vectorization standardizes uh, the text and split it into tokens, which are words or engrams, as you can see in, uh, in the example in the figure below uh, the structure of the network. Uh, these are then mapped into the unique indexes assigned, assigned to them. So, uh, we, so we just created a dictionary consisting of uh, 100,000 unique tokens uh, during, uh, during the training. The next uh, layer 
is embedding, with, uh, which, uh, which maps these indexes uh, from uh, the previous layer into trainable vectors of uh, fixed size. Uh, thanks to these steps, uh, thanks to this step, uh, the model is able to find out what uh, what weight each token has, but also what are the links between them. Uh, the vectors, which are also Co which are also computed during training, serves, uh, serves as the input to the next layer called uh, long short term memory or LSTM. It is basically a collection of connected neurons with weights that interact with each other and have extra, uh, have extra feedback connection as well. Thus, uh, it is included in the class of recurrent neural networks. As I mentioned at the beginning, our task is a binary classification, and hence the last layer, named uh, densely connected, has only one neuron, and returns a number, uh, returns a num a number value between zero and one, inclusive, uh, which means that uh, the probability after multiplying by 100 if the request contains any malicious code. So uh, if the model assigns zero to the incoming request, the model thinks that it contains, uh, it contains no threat and vice versa. In our example, there, there is a malicious code. So the model predicted a problem, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> predicted a probability of uh, more than 99% that, uh, that it is a threat. I described the general structure of the network, but it is clear that the model had to be first trained on large amounts of labeled data before it could be used in the production to get, uh, to get predictions. The training, data, the training data contained more than one million records with valid uh, requests, as well as with uh, many types of already known attacks. Threat detection uh, is not only about mm, the machine learning model, but it is a process consisting of many steps. Let's now take a closer look at them. Uh, firstly, the described model actively analyzes incoming requests or, and tries to label them which means that it um, assign them a probability if they contain some mm, malicious code. Uh, the output of the model is locked and then collected in the lock store. We then uh, periodically process these locks uh, by reducing the amount of duplicates and trying to, ex to extract malicious code from, uh, the, uh, from the labeled requests. Uh, with these steps, we are trying to simplify the work with them, as otherwise we would have to search through a large number of requests. Like, like millions of them. The next step is data analysis and decision making. In this, in, in this step, security analysts check the detected and extract threats, and they need to decide and confirm if the particular request contains some real malicious code 
for our for our services and if so they, uh, they have to quickly react and make some decisions these decisions can be of different types it can be a configuration change or uh, on the web firewall dependency changes in the applications or blocking certain IP addresses. Uh, the applications of these decisions are part of the next threat mitigation step. However, as the model doesn't evaluate the request correctly every time and uh, the malicious code are evolving, it is, uh, it is necessary to continuously improve the model. This is, uh, this is a part of the second branch in which we train the new machine learning model from, from original and newly labeled data and subsequently deploy it. So, so we are gradually expanding our data set of valid and malicious requests. And with this last step, the cycle is closed. On, on the next slide, I would like to discuss about um, about data analysis and decision making in more detail as it is a quite it, as it is a quite complex um, task as i already mentioned uh, the output of the model are request with threat probabilities based on uh, the set threshold which can be for example 50% of, uh, of, of model confidence, we divide the collected data into valid and malicious requests. At this moment, there are four cases that can happen. The first case is when the model correctly predicts the malicious request, which means through, which means through positives, and thus the quickly response to the potential threats must occur as a part of threat mitigation. The second case, uh, false positives, is when the model incorrectly evaluates the model, uh, the, sorry, evaluates the request as, as malicious. In other words, uh, in other words, uh, the model labeled the valid request with a high probability of the threat, which is unwanted behavior. In this case, the human operator must correctly label the request as valid. For the, for the next training iteration, the same reaction must then occur in, in case three, false, uh, which is false negatives. If the model fails to identify some uh, malicious code, for example, JSONP or Java injection. The last case, the last case is true negatives, where the correct, uh, sorry, <laughs> where the model correctly evaluates uh, evaluates the requests as valid and therefore no further, no further action is uh, required as this, as this, as this behavior uh, is uh, correct. To sum up, the results of this human analysis is not only in quick decisions to mitigate the threat, but also in newly labeled data which, is, which we then combine with the already created data set that is used 
to train the new, uh, the, the new model. So we can say that this is supervised learning as we train the model under our supervision. Once the model is trained, uh, we can start with the deployment uh, with the deployment step using staging. This means that we first deploy the train uh, the trained model on uh, on the development environment, then on then on the integration, and finally uh, finally on the production. If at any stage we found that the model is insufficient and it has thus a worse forecasting compared to the previous one, we go back uh, to, to analysis and next iteration of training. We need to investigate, uh, we, we need to investigate the conditions or circumstances under which this could have occurred and possibly adjust the input data sets or configuration of training parameters. On the next slide, you can see an example of a malicious request over time. On the right side, uh, on the right side is displayed uh, a screenshot of the, gray, uh, of the Greylock dashboard to which we have uh, linked the output of the model from the test environment. This solution is only temporary, but we can provide you at least a sample of active monitoring. On, uh, on, the top, on the top right, you can see the number of HTTP requests within, uh, the, within the last hour, which, as, uh, as um, I already discussed, serve as input to our model. These 1 million requests were evaluated, and it was predicted that approximately, four, uh, approximately 400 of them could be potential dangerous for us, which, uh, which is shown uh, on, the to on the bottom right. The average confidence of the model was approximately 97%. However, it should be said that this number, uh, this number of threats can be reduced in the threat uh, in in the threat detection process, as they may be duplicate, as may as they may be duplicate malicious requests, trying different combination of parameters or different endpoints. The potential threats must be assessed by security experts at the end. On uh, on the left side. You can see also a graph showing uh, the input request within the last eight hours, aggregated within minutes. Below it, you can find a graph of detected threats within these minutes. Uh, it, it allows you to discover what the activity of automated bots or crackers uh, is uh, is at the current time. It can be seen that the model uh, the, that the model detect threats uh, within within the units to tens, depending on the specific minute. In conclusion, I would like to say that our uCloud threat detection is a standard product based on the architecture. And that's all from my side. Great, Philippe. Uh, uCloud Threat Detection is one of many products uh, powered by AI, and uh, we will add uh, new features to it. So uh, please, could you share with us, Philippe, what we can expect in upcoming releases? Yes, we want to take our product to the new level by applying 
ma uh, the learned method, especially the machine learning ones, but this time focus on uh, the application layer. This means that we would like to identify uh, the security risk patterns from the application logs. So those are exciting news. Yes. Thank you, Philippe, and thank you all for your attention. So thank you and thank you for a great thank presentation <laughs> uh, of a very interesting topic because it's really like direct application of AI principle. Uh, very simple to, to present, but I guess very hard to, to do in the end. Uh, and uh, well, I, I have a very direct question in my mind, which is like, if most people in IT would think about uh, because uh, people when programming stuff are usually thinking about well can I like generalize this stuff can I use it somewhere else yes uh, we started with the implementation from the scratch so yep. we don't use uh, any open source models even those uh, commercial ones so uh, we started just uh, with the uh, architecture and with the uh, set of the initial data and uh, then we uh, moved to the analysis and so on so uh, in the end, uh, we have a uh, uh, model and uh, architecture which uh, works uh, uh, on low level, uh, uh, like HTTP requests and so on. And we, we need to and we want to move it uh, a little bit higher. So uh, we want to uh, let the AI to investigate our application logs for some suspicious uh, behavior mm -hmm. and we will <laughs> we want also to apply uh, AI for example in user management authentication and so on because uh, you know uh, we need to move uh, further we need to for example uh, to let the people authenticate uh, uh, passwordless way because uh, you know who uh, should always remember and create new and new passwords so uh, those are the new fields and uh, new business disciplines where we, where we want to uh, apply uh, AI in s from security point of view. And uh, you may uh, uh, expect those uh, new uh, features to be added uh, uh, very soon. I believe so, because I still remember these uh, days when the firewalls works on the very low level. And once you are able to get the, <laughs> the request, I mean, it is not requested so packets or uh, yes. or network uh, network uh, you know network data that is transferring when you are on almost application level now you yes. can know yes. more so probably so it could yes. be very high success yes uh, it, it must be because uh, we want to provide our uh, services the safest way uh, available and uh, you know it's all about the data uh, we need to uh, provide those data a uh, secure way and this is uh, this is the approach which could uh, definitely improve it uh, by the way, that's maybe a great question because uh, that could be a sensitive data uh, in your tool, or I mean, uh, the tool should should be somewhere inside the system, or how did you do this management of the data? Yes, uh, um, you heard it uh, today that uh, <laughs> the concerns uh, related to the ethic uh, are serious ones, and exactly. uh, as uh, we will move and as we are moving uh, uh, to uh, other higher levels of uh, of the uh, of our services. Uh, uh, we need to and uh, we want to have also uh, some ethical codexes, uh, how to work with the data and so on. Because, uh, you know, uh, as you move uh, uh, to higher level, you need to understand what the people are doing there, uh, how they behave. Uh, we, for example, uh, can uh, look for uh, the IPs uh, where the people log from. And, uh, you know, uh, this is the kind of yeah. information which is pretty sensitive. Yeah, of course. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time or, uh, I mean, we are reaching because we... We are uh, slightly shifted, so I will end the discussion, but it's very great because I like this uh, uh, simply or well-described application that you can really understand most of it. So thank you again for <laughs> okay. presenting uh, and th thanks your colleague as well <laughs> yes. uh, for presenting. And we will move uh, uh, further.